Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So, let me just make sure everything's all good. So, hey Robot Makers, do you want to know how to learn... <laughs> let me start that again. Hey Robot Makers, do you want to learn how to make cute robots using Fusion 360, using splines? Then this is the show for you. Let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, so let's have a quick look at some sessions goals for today. So yeah, we're going to be cute creating this cute robot that you can see on the uh, the right hand side of the screen there. We're going to have a look at what do we mean by cute uh, and how do we make something look cute. We're going to look at three different ways of doing that using um, sculpting form, surface modeling and fit point splines and that's what we're going to be looking at in depth today. And then we're going to do a build, we're going to build a demo, we're going to build the robot as a demo today rather than sort of doing lots of slides and then breaking out. So we're going to have slides sort of throughout the uh, the show today. So what we, when we talk about cute, what on earth do we mean? So I've looked at quite a few different cute robots uh, that are available uh, online. If you just Google cute robot, you'll find all kinds of ones. And they usually have quite a large forehead. They have uh, large eyes. They basically look like a baby. Uh, they have a small chin, small nose if they have any kind of indentation of a nose. Yeah, generally baby-like. And... Um, you, you might be able to see these if you search for things like chibi or kawaii. Uh, you'll, you'll basically just find that kind of manga look. They've really refined this. So I was inspired by a robot that I saw online. Uh, I've not got the rights to show that, so uh, I'll just have to show you the robot that I've created kind of... Um, uh, inspired by that. So as I said, there's three ways to create um, forms in Fusion 360. You can use something called form sculpting, you can use something called surface modeling, and there's a thing that's called T-splines. So let's go over to Fusion and let's have a look at some of these, shall we? So if I break out to Fusion, here we are. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to save this file first of all. Let's just call this uh, live cute demo. And the first thing we're going to do, uh, normally we, we start by creating a sketch. And what I'm going to do instead of doing that is I'm going to go over to this form. I've just noticed it's kind of doing this weird glitchy thing. So I'm just going to click on, there we go, it should stop it doing that now. Right, so if I click on this create form button, I've got all these different options here. And the first one I can do is just create a box. And you just need to say, where do you want the box? Uh, what kind of... Um, plane you want to create this on, give it some kind of dimensions, and then you're straight into form modeling. Uh, and the way that you do this is you, you pick various different sides and then you you push and pull them using this modify um, forms tool. So if we just grab that, we can sort of create a new shape um, out of here. And I don't find this particularly intuitive to do. You really have to have good skills as a sort of modeler, like a clay modeler, to be able to use this. So this isn't a technique I particularly like to do. Um, I did use this uh, in Blender a long time ago. I used to sort of push and pull little vertices around and so on. So that's the very first way. If we go back to our, our keynote there, you can see the next one is surface modeling. Right, if I just grab out of my um, thing here. So what I've got here, is an example of surface modeling. So this is a human face and that's the front view and that's this, this sort of profile view. And you can see there it's made up of lots of different um, points, connecting those points are lines and those lines form um, faces. And you tend to have on these examples four lines per face. So it's a quad and the entire face is made up of these um, these these faces join together in uh, in loops. So you can see there, there's various different loops. Like there's like a, a mouth loop goes round there. There is another one that goes sort of over the nose. There's ones around the eyes. And they make sort of a mask. And again, that's something that I've seen lots of um, tutorials on Fusion and how to use exactly that. So if we go back over to um, to Fusion, so if I just jump over here back over to Fusion. So still in this form modeling, um, but instead of creating the box, we start with um, this plane over here. In fact, it's that one there, it's the plane. And again, you just pick um, a surface that you want to start that plane on, and then you just create um, the fan. You can start off with like one by one. Oops, let's try that again, sorry. Start by one by one. This is how many, um, how many tiles will be in here. So instead of it being two wide, we can make it one wide. 
and there's our very first plane. So what we would have to do if we wanted to sort of replicate something like this is we would bring this in and we're going to have a look at how we can bring in a canvas or a picture that we've taken. Uh, and essentially then you would just go back to that modify form and you can decide whether you want to sort of get an edge. So if we just grab that edge there and hold down the alt or option key on a Mac, you can create a new edge and you can adjust that and so on. You can scale that out however you want to do. And if I just go down to this, uh, if I just move this over here for a second, there's a couple of different options on here as well that we can look at the display mode. So we tend to use box modeling, box uh, display mode, which is very straight, very angular. Uh, another one is where you can see the control. So the box is actually um, defining a, a rounded shape. Um, and the very last one is where it's just completely smooth so you can't see that original box shape and it's quite difficult to um, to design in that mode it's much better to design in the box mode and then at the very end when you're finished you can then click on the smooth one to see what the overall shape looks like so if we just uh, move and grab that correct um, it's at the wrong angle here so if I just move around there and grab that arrow I can sort of pull that back into a 3d space like so uh, so that's what it looks like as a box that's as a controlling shape. You can see there the box is kind of controlling that rounded shape, or we can just go straight to the uh, smooth form instead. So again, this takes a very long time to do this. If you have, um, if we just grab another edge there, just pull that up and we have another edge there and we pull that up individually. Those two edges are actually not joined together. I can grab that. I go back to that modify and I just grab instead of it being an edge I go to a vertex and I grab that vertex there if I just grab that you can see it's actually not connected um, at all to that let me just pull that line up again what I'm trying to show you is that these things are not connected and we need to merge them together and you need to know to do this so if I just click on that edge again hold down option and pull that up there we go so we've now got two edges that are not actually connected so I can grab hold of that and I can pull that away. You can see there, these things are sort of not connected together. And it gets very messy very easily with this. So I, I don't particularly like this method either. So I'm just going to delete all that. And the last method that we looked at um, on that slide there is T-splines. So these are my preferred way of doing this. So it's almost like your traditional way of using um, a sketch to define your shape on, but you can create very rounded shapes very easily. So we're going to do that today. I'll show you that. That's what the rest of this video is going to be about. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take uh, an image, bring this into our canvas uh, and then adjust it so that it's the correct size um, for our model. And we want to bring in two sets of images. We want one to be the front on uh, profile and then one that's going to be the side profile. And we're going to have them in a kind of a cross um, orientation. So when we create our model, we can model in 3D. So we're going to insert the canvas using this uh, sort of picture tool here we're going to roughly scale it to what we think it will be and then we can calibrate that image so that it's exactly the size that we want it to be looking at two points on the image uh, and then we can just adjust it around so that we've got um, the bottom of the image sits nicely on the origin point and that's quite important when we're modeling so let's go over and do that now so i'm going to go over to to fusion i'm going to bring in using this uh, canvas tool now I've already uploaded the two images if you wanted to upload some images that you've taken um, you would simply go to the file and upload which is just there and then you can bring in some files um, that you've you've scanned or you've taken on your phone for example so what I did before when I was modeling this out I've got my book here and I took a picture up with my phone and then uploaded that JPEG uh, into an area on here. What I've done this time though, to make this really accurate, is I've taken some screenshots of Fusion of the finished robot that we're going to create, uh, both the front view and the side view, and that's what we're going to bring in just now. So if I scroll down on here and I look for my cute bot front, let's go for that one. And it's going to say, what face do you want that to be on? So I want this face just here. Let's just uh, click on that home so we can see that. And it's bringing it in at this size. Now, I don't know what size that is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale it by 10 to begin with, which will make it much bigger. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start calibrating this image because I don't know if this is the right size. But what I do know is that those eyes are 18 millimeters uh, in diameter. So if I go over to this area on the screen here and I right click on that cute bot, oops, just there, there's a button that says calibrate. And calibrate means that we can decide what points on the image that we, oops, I've just turned off there. What points on the image do we want to choose and correct the size for this if I click on there just the very left edge of that and then the very right edge of that I know that that's actually 18 millimeters so it's now scaled the image correctly for that measurement a bit of photogrammetry going on there so that's okay for the front view uh, what we're going to do now is bring in the next one which will be on the side here so let's go and click on canvas again let's go down to cutebot and side uh, I think it's that one Let's just insert that. Again, it's asking us for a face. Let's click on that one there. Let's scale that to 10 again. And what we'll probably have to do is scale that to be the same scale as this other one. So let's just go and check what that was. So if I edit that. Uh, no, actually, that's already calibrated there, isn't it? So what I can do, I'm going to name these front and side. Yep, so we can see. And what I want to do then is just calibrate that one. So if I right click calibrate, let's go to the side and let's have a look at those two points again. So if I click around about there to, I'm guessing about there, that should be 18. And that should be good enough, I think, for our, our model today. Right, so the last thing we need to do is adjust these so that they're in the origin point is this sort of circle here, this cookie thing in the middle. And I want that to be on the very bottom edge there. So if I go to the front view, I edit the canvas and then I just adjust this up. And I can move this back over here again for a minute so I can see. And I'm going to zoom in just by pinching to zoom. Now, when I grab that arrow and I just pull up, it's moving at five millimeters at a time. I can actually just grab this middle thing here and then it's kind of a free for all. So if I just bring that in there, that looks good enough for now. And I just need to do the same with the side profile as well. So if I edit that, get onto our side profile, and I need to bring that up. Let's just zoom back a little bit. Let's bring that up to just here. And I want that to be the bottom part there, to basically the bottom of that curve. Okay, that's good think that's going to be okay. Let me just check that those two look good in 3D space. Yeah, I think, I think this one is still a little bit large actually. So I might just bring that down. Even though I've calibrated it, I didn't have a very good measurement of calibration on there. So what I'm going to do is just scale it a little bit just so that I can see that it looks about right. Let's just do that and bring that down there. There we go, that'll do. All good. This is just for reference, just so we get the shapes right. It doesn't have to be 100% for what we're doing for this today. Okay, let's get back over to our keynote and let's have a look what else we're going to do. So yes, we brought in the front sketch, um, the, the front canvas uh, as a sketch. And what we're going to do now is we're going to build the outline all the way around the left hand side of the face to begin with. We're, the, we're then going to mirror it to be the right hand side. And it's important that they're two separate paths because what we're going to use them as rails later on when we do a loft function. So we need to create a point wherever the outline changes direction. So when it starts to change a curve, we need to do it at the sort of high point of the curve or the low point of a curve. Um, it's a bit intuitive and you'll see that as you click, it'll form, it'll follow that shape and it'll adjust it. So it might not look correct to begin with, but it does work out right. So some of the rules of thumb here is that we need to create as few points as possible to create a really smooth outline. And we create more points when there is detail. Um, we want to create one half and we'll mirror that just to help uh, ourselves out later. Okay, so let's try that. Let's go back over to Fusion. And what we're going to do, we're going to start out, let's start with the front face. So the first thing I need to do then is create uh, a new sketch. Let's get this it's about there, that'll do. And what I'm going to do now that I've picked the front face there, 
this tool here with these dots, the fit point spline is the tool that we're going to be using throughout this today. So I'm going to click on the origin to begin with, and I'm going to click about here, here, there, there, about there, there, and then the top. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can zoom in and just move these about to make sure they look correct. And if I decide that I need an extra spline because it changed twice and I've not really covered that, so there I can right click and I can insert a spline um, fit point. If I just click on there, I've now got an extra point that I can bring in. And again, I can just tweak this so that I want it to look about correct. Now, if you look, it's actually going down there and that's because there is handles for each of these and this handle here is the one that's defining that end point uh, and if we stretch it you can see the curve changing if we twist it you'll see that the there's a, a a rounded shape that's forming there just to show us what the effect of that is now one of the tips i found is you need to make sure that this is completely level as it joins the bottom and the same at the top as well so we're going to click on that horizontal vertical and the same on the top there. And that just means when we mirror it across, it'll be absolutely perfect. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, we've got the, the little chin there, got the cheek sort of shape, got the round head, everything looks good. Now what we can do to make this fully sketch, um, fully defined the sketch is we can actually put loads of dimensions in so we can measure from that point to that point there and whatever they are we can just accept them we could do the same again like so there to there and so on and we could do that all the way around if you wanted to i'm not going to do that now but that's probably recommended to do that and what i found is if you've got a measurement like that 27.574 i would probably just round that up to be 27 and a half and it's not going to make much difference um similar with that 23 let's just have that as 23 and that one there's one point let's just have that as two uh, and so on it just makes it easier to replicate later on and the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create um a line from the origin point to the very top there. I'm going to select that line and I'm going to make that line a construction. So I can either click on that line type as construction there or I can just press X on the keyboard and you get this nice dotted line. Um, I can now select that edge. I can go to create and mirror. So we've got the object selected. The mirror line is just there and we've now got the whole outline so we've got like a, a left side and a, a right side perfect so that's what the very first sketch is so if we just rotate that round in 3d space we can see that line and that profile there okay let's just go back over to our keynote and so yes i said there the horizontal constraint we need to make sure that's in place for the top and bottom because then we get that nice smooth line. If we don't do that, we'll get a really fine, a really sharp point at the chin and the very top of the head, and it won't look round at all when we use the loft command. It'll look like a little peak, and that's not something we want. So that's something just to be aware of there. So we've done the top, the, the front profile. We're now going to create the side profile. Um, so similar as we did before, but this one, we're not going to mirror it across. We're going to create both halves one at a time uh, and this is like the front of the face you can see there there's the, the chin the sort of eye region then the huge head and the eyes on cute things are usually a lot further down if you take a human face and you look at it the eyes look like they're about in the middle of the head but when you draw these things out they're actually um, further down than you'd expect so your head's absolutely huge i've got some robots um, just behind me actually if i go to that view there so you can see on a human head the eyes are pretty much um, sort of just above the middle of the head uh, and you've got this great big head there okay let's go back over to fusion so here we go and this time we're going to create a new sketch and it's going to be on this side oops I just did that wrong let me just do that again so sketch and we want it to be, if I hold down and click there, I can actually select that profile that's through the back of the other one. Okay. I'm also going to turn off 3D sketch because I want it to, to look at the, the, um, the plane as I'm working. Um, you might not have known that you can use these various different things here down the bottom. So if I click on that orbit, I can sort of orbit round. I can go over to this little 
house thing here and click that and that'll get me my normal view but if I click on this one here that says look at and it's also on the sketch palette as well there it'll look at the thing that we're working on straight on so let's just get this perfect there okay so similar as we did before we're going to use the fit point spline tool we're going to start at the origin I'm just going to start working um, along the different points so wherever we think it changes um, we're going to do that so this time I'm going to leave that because it's we want it to be tangent to that point so we can leave that there and then we're going to do the same again so click on the bottom let's just click a couple of points and that's probably all we need let's just do one at the top there and then join that up there okay so I can see there that's not quite as I want it to be because it's creating kind of a divot so what we need to do is just bring that down a bit and let's just make that fit a bit better there we go and we probably can just adjust that a bit better there we go that looks that looks okay I'll just check the bottom as well that looks pretty good in fact on the bottom we can probably do the thing we did before where we um, we make sure these bottom points are vertical let's make sure both of them are vertical it looks like they oh, there we go that bottom one isn't perfect there we go and I'll just help again when we're modeling out right so we've got two profiles going on now we have the front and we have the side profile we don't need any more profiles from that for now uh, and we can actually turn off those if we wanted to you can adjust the uh, transparency if you just double click on or sorry edit the canvas you can actually select how transparent uh, or not that canvas is depending on how much of that you want to see so it, I think it defaults to about halfway which is fine but yeah we can just use that little eye there to turn those off and there we go let's have a look what we're going to do next so just a reminder I go live every single Sunday at seven o'clock uh, British summer time at the moment uh, so seven o'clock local time and if you want to help me out you can click like on this video whether you're watching on Facebook Twitter or uh, on YouTube you can leave me a comment and tell me if you're going to be working using T-splines if you've ever used it, the Fusion 360 in that way before and make sure you hit the bell on YouTube so they always get notified whenever I go live with a new video and that's just a reminder yes go live every single Sunday okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a series of uh, offset planes from the very bottom of our model um, to roughly near the top uh, I found three to five planes seems to be a good fit you might want to tweak that depending on uh, your particular robot that you're working on and what we're then going to do is create uh, loops around this so that we can then loft between those to create our our really nice organic shape so let's go and try doing that so we need to create about five different offsets so let's go back over to our model so we're going to use the uh, construct and offset plane so we're going to click the very bottom plane which is just there x y and um, let's move that up by let's start out with 10 that looks okay and these appear in under the construction area just here so construction plane so we could call that one bottom and uh, we can create a, another one so let's go for construct offset plane let's click that bottom one again the very very bottom one and then let's make this 20 and we'll call that one mid bottom let's create uh, another one let's just find our origin planes and make sure that is turned on which one is it that one there that's the one we want I'm just going to move my model around a little bit just so I can click on the edge there right so we want another offset plane uh, let's go for 40 this time or maybe 50 that looks good let's call that one uh, mid top and we'll create one more which we'll call top so let's just click on that very bottom one again and then offset plane 
let's try 60 no nope, maybe 70 70 looks good and then let's just rename that plane to be top just helps when we're organizing and we're trying to switch things on and off right so what we're going to do is we're going to create loops around this and this is another really cool feature that we're going to use which is called intersection so let's just go back to our notes for a second to see if there's anything we need to look at on here so this is what we're going to do we're going to create uh, an intersection between the two planes that we just created those two uh, models that are, um, the, the front and the side profile and we're going to intersect them with whichever plane we're currently on from the top to bottom and we use this project include and intersect i will go through this in a second and what that will do is it will put this purple circle where there was planes intersect and we can then use that point to be very precise and use another t-spline um, to build the shape so we're going to use the fit point spline between those purple connections and that will create the shape that we're after at each level okay let's go back over to fusion so let's start on this plane here so this bottom plane let's create a new sketch and what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the create project and include and then intersect so if i now click on that profile there we will see that we get a little purple uh, line uh, circle if i click on that one i can see that just appeared there click on that one it's just appeared there and that one it's just appeared there and you can see this much easier if you sort of look in 3d uh, so if i go and just move this over here and just do 3d sketch just so we can see this a bit easier and what I'll do now is I'll click on the fit point spline and now you can see them much easier. So if we click on that point there, click on this point here, it's snapping to them, that point there, and then there's one at the very back, and then back to our original shape, which is just there. We've now created an intersected um, outline of that head and that means that it will be perfectly formed when we uh, when we look at this now what we can do if we're not happy with the shape of this if I just turn off that uh, front profile for a second so if I just go into let's just name those so that's our front profile this is our side profile and this is our bottom um, profile Okay, so let's just turn off these for a second. And we can also just turn off those constructions for a second. Right, so what I want to do is, if I just click on the outline, I can click on these handles and I can make them larger or smaller. And similar with this one here, I can adjust that. If I just make want to make the robot not quite as, they, they tend to look a little bit triangular when you do this. So if you adjust these and you want them to be exactly the same, what you can do is you can just dimension them. So you can click on that, give that a dimension. If I just go down there, 22.7. I click on that one too. Oops. And then I just click on that dimension there. It'll be the same size. Now the angle might not be the same, so we can just we can just draw a little line up from the center point there. Click on it, press X to make it a construction line. And we can draw another one out from the middle these are just construction lines so they don't have to be uh, anywhere else just press x again to make it a construction line and then what we can do is do a d for dimension click on there and the click on there and uh, oops on there and then we've got an angle there so let's just say that's 98 and let that do that and then we can do the same on the other one just click on there to use that same line just there and let's make that one 98 as well and then it just means they'll be both be exactly the same we can also do that thing where we make these both horizontal the same with that one there and that means that we've got um, uh, the shape as we want it to be and because the points are pivoting around those um, intersected points it means this shape will be really good and true so let's just do finish sketch let's just load back our other profiles to see how that's coming along Let's see if that's going to look okay you can see there what's going on so let's load up our uh, mid bottom uh, construction plane so we've done our first one which was the bottom one we can untick that one now and let's click on this mid bottom one let's create another sketch on there let's just select the face 
Uh, let me just make sure that that's the correct plane that we're working on. So I'm just going to do that again. Click and hold. So yep, it's the mid bottom plane we're working on. I'm going to turn off that 3D sketch for now. And then it's going to do look at so that we're looking straight down on it. OK, let's do the same thing again. So create project include and then intersect and then click on the left side. You can see that red appeared over there. We click over here. You can see that red one appeared about there. Click on the top one. And I think the red one appeared over there. And then let's click on this one here. And that's appeared there. So again, if we just now rotate this round a little bit, when we go to our um, fit point, we can now see those purple circles. So we can click on there, 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 there. Oops. Let's just undo that there and there. OK. So that's a little bit more egg shaped because we haven't followed um, that design underneath. So let's go back to the top and just pull this out a little bit. And let's also make that horizontal just so that it's not lopsided unless we want it to be lopsided. There we go. That'll do. Let's finish that sketch. OK, we're nearly done with these now. So let's now go for the mid top plane. Let's create a new sketch on there. Um, let's do the create project include intersect again. Let's click on that side one, that side one, the bottom one and the top one. Let's just have a look in 3D space what this looks like. Oops. And let's use our fit point spline tool again to connect these together. Like so. OK, I'm going to let that one be a little bit triangular just so we can see what happens. And then let's do the very last. Let's finish that sketch and create on our very top plane the final sketch. Again, we do create project include intersect. Let's click on that line, that line, that line and that line. You can see the little red things appearing as we did it. And now that we click on the fit point spline, we can see those last four intersected points. OK, there we go. Right. So our form is now taking shape. It's looking a little bit there, let's just rotate it round. OK, let's turn off our constructions. We don't need those anymore. We don't need our origins. Let's turn those off. And let's turn off our sketch. Let's rename some of our sketches just so we know. That looks like it's the mid bottom profile. That one is the mid top profile. And this one is the top profile. OK. Right, let's just go back over to our notes and see what we need to do next. OK, so yes, we've repeated that for all the planes. That looks pretty similar to what we've uh, just created. Um, we should end up with something that looks similar to that. OK, so we're now going to use the loft tool. The loft tool is an amazing tool. We'll have a look at this on its own and then we'll go into our model just to explain what's going on. But we're essentially going to click from the very bottom to the top each one of those profiles and we're going to create a loft between them and that will then use the, that will those profile shapes and build up a form. And we're also going to add to that rails which means that it'll just be even more perfect and will it be easier to show you this than to kind of explain it but we essentially can use each of those halves of the profile the left and the right side or the front and the back side of the the profile that we created as rails one rail at a time and I'll show you what happens if we get this wrong we get a bit of an error message I'll show you that too um, so let's go over and back over to fusion and let's create some lofts so before we do that let's just create a very new design and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a sketch on this very bottom plane here let's just make a, a circle um, let's now just do a quick offset construction plane from the bottom there um, that'll do and let's do another sketch on here and let's make a square shape or rectangle. I'll center that on there. OK, that'll do. OK, so what Loft allows you to do is create a shape between two different sketches, even if those sketches are completely different. So if we go to Create and Loft 
And then what we need to do is create, click on plus and then the profiles that we want to loft towards. So if I just click OK, look what's happened. It's gone from a circle to a square. And you can do this between any profile, any complexity that you wish. It's a really, really amazing um, tool that you can use. So let's just uh, go back to our, our cute robot. So what we're going to do is we are going to now loft between us. I'm going to turn off the front and the side and I'm going to go to create loft and I'm going to click the the bottom profile, the mid bottom, the top and uh, sorry the mid top and then the very top and if I just click OK you can see that we've got kind of our robot shape and it's missing the very top and the very bottom so let's just go and fix that. Let's bring back in our two profiles and let's just carry on with the lofts. So if I just click on, if I in fact double click on that loft tool, I can add in an extra top point, which is that, uh, sorry, that point there. Let's click on that one. And if we look, that point is, it's there, but it's missing this top point here as well. So we can fix that in a minute with our, with our rail tool. Um, we can also choose how this, um, it, whether it goes for connected if you look at that back point there or direction it's looking a bit odd there so you can play with these and just see if this looks right for your particular robot i'm going to do the same with the very bottom one there so let's just click another profile and then just click that uh, bottom point there now it's complaining about that because you can't add these points in um, in the wrong order so if i just get rid of all of these different um, things I start with that very bottom point there so I do add start with that bottom point then I click the first one the second one I keep jumped ahead there so and the next one is that one there the next one is that one there that one there and then let's try that point there actually and then click OK so we can see now our, our shape is beginning to form now. It doesn't quite look right. It's nearly there, but not quite. And um, this colour that's been applied, this material, is purposely designed to be reflective so that you can see the shape properly. You can see how that um, metallic shape is reflected around. And you'll always get a seam at the back. Don't worry about that. We can throw a different material on just by pressing A. So I like to go for, let's go for like a yellow matte Oh, let's go for a glossy colour actually. So go for, oops, a, so I'm just typing down here in this, in the library. Let's just move that to the side so we can see what's going on. Yellow, <laughs> let's try that again. Yellow and then glossy. So plastic gloss that'll do. And then I just throw that onto the, I don't know why I, it disappeared off the screen then but it's, it's it's now got a glossy yellow color we can leave it at that if we want to adjust that we can do just by adjusting the color later on sometimes i like to make it a little bit more yellow than orange but that will do and you can see there's like a little sun shining on it it just helps us understand what the shape is that we're looking at okay so that's nearly the shape if we go to the side profile look what's happening it's not quite following the shape of the profile that we've created um, you can see there it's missing out a little bit. So if we go back to our loft feature down here and edit that feature, we can now add in some rails. So rails are things that will help guide the outline of the shape. So if I click on plus and I click on that first one there, and then I click on plus and I click on the second one, it came up with an error message then. And the reason for that is because I've got chain selection selected. So I just need to make sure that's unselected and we'll try that again. So click on one and that's got the first half. P click the plus button and then click on the second. So what the error message is saying there, if I just move out the way, it says the rails do not intersect all the profile points. All rails must intersect every profile. And that's because at the moment, we, when we created our loft, the very top point um, was only on this back profile and not on this left-hand side one. So what we'll have to do is just edit our loft and adjust that. So this very top profile, point, point 0.6, let's delete that and let's just add that back in again. 
but add that point there. So let's see if that's going to work out OK. OK, so let's just click OK for a second. Oh, it's, it's complaining about my rails still. So let's just add those rails back in. So click on the left one. Click on the right one. It's saying the point profile can only be used for the first or last profile. So let me just see why it's complaining about that. Make that tangent point as well. It's going to take off the rails for a second. I have had this happen a few times as I've been working through rails. So I'm just going to leave those front ones off. Let's just spin it round to the side. And let's have a look and see if the shape is conforming to the side as well. So if we add those rails back in and just click the left rail, click plus and then the right rail. So it's still not happy about that. A point profile can only be used as the first or last profile. Right. I think it was complaining about that. So what I'm going to do, because I have seen this many times, I'm, the best way to deal with this is just to start again with that particular loft. So let's just delete that loft, create the loft again, make sure we have all our profiles loaded there so we can see what's going on. And let's start from the bottom up. So I'm going to click the bottom point and we can add the profile, the um, lofts in different parts as well if we find that this doesn't work so I'll click the very bottom point and I'm going to click the next one the next one the next one the next one and then the very last one I'm going to do as that point there okay let's try adding some of the rails in so if I add that rail there and then I'd add in the right rail that now should be completely conforming to the outside edge it looks like it is doing and then let's try the front and the back one again so if I try that front one that seems okay let's try the back one no it's not happy with that and that's because I haven't had the top point really what I should do is just move the entire model over a little bit so that that very top point there is the top point on the on the model so that's fine we'll just take out that rail number three and click OK it's good enough I think OK, so let's have a look. Let's turn off all our sketches and let's have a look what's going on. We've got that seam down the side there, and that's because in the uh, display settings, I've got the visual style set to visible with um, shaded with visible edges only. If I go to shaded, it'll get rid of that, but it is still there. OK, and then we can throw back on that uh, press A for appearance. We can just drag that color on there. So we've got our our shape there and then if we want to put some features on like some eyes what we need to do is create another offset plane uh, and that'll make it look a, a little bit more human so if I just go to construction offset plane let's do it from the front plane which is just there if I just click and hold in there let's try that again Make sure my origins are all selected there. There we go, that's what I was missing. And then I'm just going to move that to be... And make sure my construction's on so I can see it. Just in front, some somewhere in front of the face, like so. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to click on that um, plane. I'm going to click on Create Sketch. And what I'm going to do now is just create a circle with a diameter of about, I think it's 18, is what we had on our original one and I'm going to roughly position that I can bring back our canvases as well because look it's right down there and what I can now do is just position this a bit better so if I just bring in a construction line there and a construction line there just select them and press X to make them a construction line as you can see there it's got that little dotted thing and then we can just dimension it from there to there like so, oops. So that's going to be 15.5. Let's try that. It's good enough. And then from the bottom, let's see what that is 25. Perfect. And now that we've got one, we can just go over, we've selected it, we can go over to mirror, 
we can select the mirror line as being that central point there and then we've got a second one there too okay and then what i've got on this one is i've just got some little details here so if i just draw a line through the middle um, like so um, actually we can we can mirror that across in a second so that's not a problem and again x make that x let's draw a line out from the center there this is another construction line and then let's just do a dimension between the two of those to get an angle and the angle is 60 and that's just like the center point of where we're going to draw this uh, next line so let's just roughly sketch this out like so doesn't matter if it's not perfect to begin with because we can just adjust everything in so that's going to be let's measure that i think it's three and so if we make those two lines parallel that is parallel to that and also let's just make sure that they're perpendicular so that's nice and square on i think all the sides are perpendicular now and then what we want to do is just make sure that this mid the middle of this line intersects with that line there so we can do that a number of ways uh, the easiest way in fact is probably if i just move this down here just give that a dimension in fact let's uh let's just give this entire line a dimension so i'm gonna guess that's 24 something like that and then what I can do now is I can select that line and this thing here is the midpoint constraint and this midpoint constraint if we click on that little point there it'll make sure that they're intersected uh, and we can make sure that that's the same with that one down there too now it's still floating around there so again we can we can do another little trick there we can make sure that that line is equal to that line and now because we've got the whole thing measured as 24 millimeters from end to end it's locked that in place okay so what we can do now is we can just mirror across the different lines that we want so we want that line that line that line there and that line let's click on it there and then the mirror line is that one there click OK we've now got those two mirrored across okay let's get rid of our canvases for a second but make sure our last sketch can turn all these other ones off for a second and we'll call this one the uh, eye uh, profile what we can do now is select them and then basically just cut them back into the model so i'm going to cut those back into the model just by extruding so I'll press e to extrude it's going to select all the different parts of the profile that we want like so and then we're going to keep pushing that back until it intersects like that with our model doesn't matter how how much it intersects at the beginning and we're not going to do a cut we're going to do um let's let's do intersect i think that's no let's not do that let's just do new body for now so it looks like he's got some binoculars on but we are going to use the intersect tool to do some clever stuff with this because what we want is we want the bit that's inside the head and we want to get rid of these bits here so we can use this combine um, so if we click on the target body which is this we then click on the head as the tool body and we want to keep the tool and then let's just do intersect what that's now going to do is it's going to create a new body so if we go to our bodies which is here let's just name them so that's the head that is the left as we look at it it's the left eye and then that is the right eye now currently they're both occupying the same space which is why you get this weird sort of heck you know um, cross hatched effect there you can see if i untick that um, it looks like that so what we can now do is use that um to cut into the head but keep the tool so let's just do that let's go to combine let's combine the head with the tool which is the eye and we want to keep them but we want to cut out that shape and if we now just throw a color on there i like to use matte black and let's just throw that into the eye 
like so. Let's just turn off the origin so we can see that. We've now got the eye, which is, if we just look at that, which is that perfect shape there. And if we turn off the eye and look at the head, we've now got a place for that to actually go inside. So we can do the same again there. So we just do combine. We click on that and then the head. We want to do an intersection. Keep the tools like so. So that our left eye is now just there. And then we want to use that as a cutting tool. So we do a combine again. We want to, the target body is going to be the head. The tool is going to be the eye. And we want to cut it, but keep the tool. And then we can just spin that round a little bit. Let's do A for appearance and throw that mat onto there. Okay. And there we go. We've now got a little robot head that looks cute. Now, it probably needs a little bit more work. And we can the, the way that we do the work is by adjusting those um, handles in each of the profiles. So we can look there. The moment it's got a bit of a triangular look to it still and that's because we go for that top profile and we edit that 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 handle there probably just needs pulling out a little bit and these ones probably just need adjusting oops a little bit as well and again we probably want to mirror that across just to make that so that these are the exact same size if i just dimension that out um, let's just make sure we can see that so whatever that is, let's do the same there. So if I just click on that, D for dimension, click on it. And when it's asking for the dimension value, we can just click on another dimension to copy that. It's copying, see that's D21. That's the, the, the value of that particular dimension. And you can look at the uh, all the parameters for your sketch. If you open up this uh, parameters thing, you can see for each of these things, excuse me, that um, if we look at the the top profile, D21 is listed there and it's 16 point whatever. So if we could actually change that to be 16.5 and they both now change because they both refer back to that. Okay. Um, let's just make sure that that one, that top one as well is horizontal just so it doesn't look too odd. And I'm also going to check that that yeah, is whatever. That is the same. Yep. Good just to make sure that that's um, as it should be. Perfect, okay. So we now go back to our model. It's now adjusted that model based on the adjustments we've done to that top profile. So if we want to render this out and save this as an image, we can go over to the render. I'm not going to do this now because uh, it'll basically just destroy any of my live streaming capability. Um, but what I can do is show you one I've made earlier. So if I just go over to uh, my recents, Let's go to recent data and I go for the cute bot. I think it's that one there. And I go to the render. Oh, it mustn't be that one. Which one is it? Cute bot version three. Let's go for that one. And go for render. It saves the renders that I've already made, so I can just show you what they look like. So I was working on a, a body on that one, just to, uh, I've not quite got there with that yet. But you can kind of see what I was going for, but there you go. It looks quite nice when it's rendered those out. You get this nice kind of shadow effect. It just really, really makes it look realistic in this little highlight there as well. Cool. Okay, so let's just go back to our slide and see if there's anything else we need to uh, cover off. So yes, we've added extra details. We've uh, added the eyes. You can see on this one, I've actually filleted the eye socket area just to add an extra bit of detail on there. So if you've got a really round form, what you can do is add some sharp pop, uh, bits to that form and it'll really just make the detail pop when you render that out. So if you want to join me on Discord, we have our own Discord server um, for Kev's Robots. We have, uh, if you go to action.smilesfan.com slash join dash Discord, uh, you'll see a little sign up form there and you can get access to Discord right away and continue the conversation with us at a deeper level. So I think that's everything that we have for you today on uh, Fusion 360. Let me just go back over to Fusion. Um, and we went through quite a few different techniques today. So we looked at how to use... Um, the spline, the fit, fit spline tool. 
um, which meant that we could um, create really organic round shapes. We used the loft tool to organically match different uh, profiles together of different shapes and you get this really rounded shape based on that. Um, and we then did quite a few other things as well along the way, um, such as bringing in images and calibrating those images onto our canvas. Okay, so this is the point in the video where if uh, you're watching this on replay, this is the point of the video where I'll say thank you very much for watching and I shall see you next time.